To start this lesson, copy the Weight Machine 1 folder from the CD to the Documents folder. You'll find the folder in the SolidWorks Files folder on the CD. Once you've copied the folder, open the Weight Machine file. This is as far as we're going to go with the Weight Machine. There are a few more things we could do to finish it, but the assembly is far enough along that I can explain a few new concepts and you'll have all the skills you need to create an assembly like this or any other assembly. Almost all the construction of this assembly used more of the same skills you've already learned. The pulley brackets were added and constrained in the frame assembly and the pulleys, bolts, and washers were added to the main assembly. The pulleys, the lap bar, and the bench press lever were also constrained to their positions so that the cables could be constructed. If you zoom into a pulley, you can see a dashed circle. A sketch was added to the pulley part file and this circle was drawn. It represents the center of the cable and it was used to construct the cable. If you zoom into an end of the cable, you can see that the end of the cable is a separate part. Cable ends were constructed before the cable was and they were constrained to their position. Once the cable ends were constrained, all that was left to do is create a sweep between the cable ends and along the reference circles on the pulleys. There are two cables in the assembly and both of them were created while working in this assembly. Grips were added to the bench press lever and the lap bar. Both grips were created using the same technique you used to add the upholstery to the back rest. The lap bar, for example, was inserted into an assembly and then the grip was created in the assembly from the surfaces of the bar. Everything I've talked about so far requires skills that you've already learned, but they were applied to different parts. Now I'll show you aspects of the assembly that we haven't talked about. If you expand the mates folder, you can see that it's a very long list. And it would take too long to search through the list to find a particular mate. When an assembly becomes this large, you have to use the view mates command to find mates. Let's look at the clasp on the lap bar so that I can show you how to use the command. First, I want you to notice that the clasp is constrained to the cable, and if you think about it, none of the mates we've used so far can constrain the clasp this way. So let's look at the mates that constrain it. Click any part of the clasp, and then open the view mates command. This opens a new window with all the mates associated with the part. Now you can pass your pointer over the mates to see the geometry used by them. There's also a mate that we haven't used. Close the window and then view the mates for the lat cable end. The lock mate locks features together based on their current position. We're interested in learning how the clasp is constrained to the end of the cable, so click this mate. First, the end of the cable was constrained in position so that the cable could be constructed. Next, the clasp was moved in place by dragging and right dragging. Once the clasp was in place, the lock mate, which is a standard mate, was applied. All you have to do is select a surface on the clasp and a surface on the cable end to apply it. This locks the parts together so that they move as one part. Close the view mates window, and now I'll explain a little more about how the assembly was constructed. All the moving parts were constrained for movement before the cables were constructed. In fact, the last step was to create the cables. Linear coupler mates were added to the lap bar and guide on the weight stack. So when the lap bar moves down, the guide moves up. Go ahead and move the lap bar down. The first thing you'll notice is the cable didn't move. In order to move the cable, you have to rebuild the assembly. The reference points for the start and end of the sweep moved along with the bar and guide. So in order to change the sweep, the assembly had to be rebuilt. When a part like a cable has to change shape, it has to be rebuilt. And this is the way you handle open cable systems. Move the bar back to the top. And now I'll explain how the bench press lever works. If you notice, the bench press lever didn't move when the lap bar was moved up and down. The reason for this is in the mates folder. Scroll to the bottom of the list. Now expand the lap pull down operation folder. The linear coupler mate that controls the movement of the bar and guide is in this folder. If you look further down the list, you can see that the press operation folder is suppressed. Expand the folder 
and these are the linear coupler mates that control the movement of the parts when the bench press lever is moved. Suppress the lat pull down folder and then unsuppress the press operation folder. Now move the lever forward and then rebuild the assembly. This pulley moved down and the guide moved up when the lever was moved. Now move the lever back and then rebuild the assembly. The bench press lever requires two coupler mates because the pulley and guide move when the lever is moved. The guide moves at half the rate the pulley moves and the pulley moves at the same rate as the lever. The linear coupler mates were added to the folder because adding folders allows you to easily suppress and unsuppress groups of mates. All you have to do is suppress or unsuppress the folder. Creating folders in the mate folder is the same process as creating folders for parts in the assembly tree. Highlight a few mates and then right click and select add to new folder. Aside from adding mate folders and using the lock mate, you've practiced applying all the tasks required to create this assembly. You might take the time to study the assembly to confirm that you know how to create and constrain the parts. If you find that you don't understand something, review the lessons in the course.